Have you ever seen this interactive hover effect on cards and wondered how it works? If you haven't understood how it's realized, no worries. In this video, I will explain it in detail and demonstrate everything visually. The effect provides a good user experience by reacting to the user's cursor movement and making the card more attractive. Creating this card tilting effect using CSS only is possible, but we are going to do it with JavaScript. That's because the one we will create is smarter and more engaging. It not only tilts on hover but reacts to mouse movement towards the center and has a gloss effect that responds to the cursor movement as well. You will learn how to use the CSS Rotate 3D property, track mouse movement with JavaScript and perform dynamic calculations based on that. VS Code and browser are open. Our files are created. Inside our HTML we have named our project and the other files attached to it. We only have one div with an ID named card. In CSS we don't have so much either. We only have some reset code. Three colors saved as variables. The body tag centralizes its only content which is the card. Its height stretches to the height of the viewport and the white color from the variable is set as the main color of the page. Next we have card which is converted to, the, to a square box of 400 pixels. It has a linear gradient background color, its sharp corners are made rounded and its cursor is changed to the pointer. We gave it a simple box shadow effect and in advance we give it transition property to make that hovering effect smoother, which we are going to create. Let's jump into JS and start working on its realization. In JS, first we call our card const card equals document object get an element method and we pass the card ID. While in CSS to track hover event listeners, we simply use hover pseudo classes. In JS, to do the same, we have to write two event listeners. First one is mouse move, so we write card at event listener mouse move and then we write its callback function that means whenever the mouse moves over the card this event listener's callback function gets executed the second event listener we have to use is mouse live and this one's uh, callback function gets executed whenever the mouse moves away or leaves the card that means we write hover effect related code inside the first event listener callback function and then we undo or remove what we wrote inside the second event listener callback function. But before going further, let's first understand the CSS Rotate 3D property, which we are going to use to achieve the effect. The property accepts four arguments, x, y, z and angle. Angle is clear, it's the rotation angle. As for the x, y and z, they allow us to create an arbitrary rotation axis in 3D space. Let's say we want to rotate the card around the x-axis by 30 degrees. We call the rotate x property, give it 30 degrees and done. Around the y-axis, again the rotate y property and we did it. But what if we want to create our custom axis that lies in 3D space, however needed, and rotate an element around it. Let's say we want to rotate the card around an axis that lies diagonally on the x and y plane by 20 degrees. We could use the combination of rotate x and rotate y properties, but in that case we need to calculate how much and in which direction we have to rotate the card around the x and y axis to get one degree of rotation around this custom axis. This way it gets really complicated. So in such cases, Rotate 3D property comes in handy, because it's based on this very idea. As we said, its first three arguments allow us to create our custom rotation axis. The values for the arguments x, y and z are relative to each other. In other words, their relative proportions matter rather than their exact values. That means giving 1 for the x and 100 for the y creates the same rotation axis as giving 50 for the x and 5000 for the y arguments. So for simplicity we are going to use the values in a range of minus 1 to 1, escaping large numbers. Now if we give 1 for the x and 1 for the y arguments, we create this custom axis that lies diagonally. That way, giving different values to x and y arguments, 
we create an arbitrary axis on the x-y plane and then rotate the element by any degrees. Now we know that when hovering over the card, we are actually giving different values for the x and y arguments of the rotate 3D property. So that's what we have to do. We have to track the mouse cursor and generate these values dynamically. So in JS, inside the first event listener callback function, from the event object, which is passed as an argument to the callback function, we get client x property and then save it in a variable named pointer x. We also get client y and save it in a variable named pointer y. The client x and client y properties define the coordinates of the mouse pointer relative to the browser's visible viewport. We can console them for demonstration. Console log pointer x and pointer y. Opening inspect, we head over to console. We see that these values are dynamic. The pointer x is the horizontal distance between the browser's left edge and the mouse cursor, while the pointer y is the vertical distance between the browser's top edge and the mouse cursor. After getting the mouse cursor pointers, we call one method on card named get bounding client rack and then save it in a variable named card rack. This method returns an object of card properties like width and height, top left, which we need for further calculations. Next, we are gonna save half width and half height of the card in separate variables. Half width equals card rack width divided by two. We are gonna do the same for the height. We did so because we need these variables for our future calculations. We also have to save the card center coordinates in separate variables. So we write const card center x, which equals card rec its left property plus half width. This gives us the horizontal distance between the browser's left edge and the card center. Let's do the same for the vertical distance. Card center y equals card drag top property plus half width. And this one gives us the distance between the browser's top edge and the card center. Having these values, now we have to calculate the mouse cursor coordinates relative to the card center. Its horizontal value, we're gonna name const delta x that equals pointer x minus card center x. So subtracting the card center x, which is a horizontal distance between the browser's left edge and the card center, from the pointer x, which is also a horizontal distance between the browser's left edge and the mouse cursor, gives us a horizontal distance between the mouse cursor and the card center. Now we have to calculate the delta y, which equals pointer y minus card center y. This one gives us the vertical distance between the mouse cursor and the card center. Finally, we calculate the dynamic values for the x and y arguments of the rotate 3D property. So we write const rx that equals delta y divided by half height. We are gonna use the rx variable for the x argument, but we see that it's based on the vertical variables. That's because the x argument itself depends on the vertical movement of the mouse. In this manner, we calculate the ry, which we are going to use for the y argument. It equals delta x divided by half width. Now we give transformation to the card. We call card its style property transform equals rotate 3D property. For the x argument, we give minus rx. For the y, we give ry variable. For the z, we give zero, and the angle of rotation is gonna be 10 degrees. We made rx variable negative because its calculation gives us numbers which are reversed for the x property. Like it gives us one, 
while we need minus 1 here. By the way, to make the rotate 3D property work as expected, we have to activate a perspective space. And we do that by applying a new property called perspective, to which we give 400 pixels value, and it should be used before using rotate 3D property. If you do not know how does perspective property work and want to learn about it, then watch this video where I explain it in more detail with cool examples. Hovering over the card, the tilt effect gets applied to it, but leaving it, it keeps this effect and does not convert to its origin state. We have to fix it inside the mouse leaf event listener. Inside it, we call the card, its style property, and we set it to null. This line of code removes all the style applied to the card in JavaScript. We test it, we see that it looks cool but not natural. Hovering over the center tilts the card the same way as we hover over the edges. This happens so because the value for the rotation angle is constant. But this value must decrease along with our movement towards the center. And it must increase as we move towards the edges from the center. In other words, we have to make the rotation angle value dynamic. Before doing that, we have to find the distance between the mouse cursor and the card center. And for this calculation, we have to use the Pythagorean theorem, where the hypotenuse is the square root of the sum of the squares of the other two sides. The sides are delta x and delta y, when the hypotenuse is this exact distance between the mouse cursor and the card center. So we write const distance to the center which equals math class from it we call square root method inside it we again call math class and this time we call pow method that accepts delta x for the base and 2 for the exponent so it takes delta x and rises it in a power of 2 we sum it with another such operation but this time on delta on delta y so this formula gives us the hypotenuse, which is actually the distance between the center and the mouse cursor. Next, we have to calculate the maximum distance between the card center and the furthest edge. So we write const max distance. We call math class again, max method, and we provide half width and half height. So the max method takes the maximum value from these two and saves it in this variable. You may be wondering and confused. Since the card is a square box of 400 pixels, you may be asking yourself, aren't the half width and half height equal to each other? Well, the answer is yes and no at the same time. See, when we hover over the card, we actually tilt it and skew it, which causes every constant value to change and become dynamic along with the mouse movement. Even the most constant values like width, height, left and top change and become dynamic. That's why we wrote this code to track the max distance along with the mouse movement. Now we calculate the dynamic degree for the rotation angle. Const degree that equals distance to the center multiplied by 10 divided by max distance. We multiplied by 10 because the only division of distance to the center by max distance gives us a small rotation angle and therefore we multiplied by 10 to get at least 10 degree of rotation finally we pass this variable into the rotate 3d property eventually we got the effect we wanted moving towards the center the angle of rotation decreases and it increases when we move towards the edges. This is how we want it to be. Now we will work on the gloss effect, which follows the same technique and methods. We head over to the HTML file. Inside the card div, we create one more div with an ID gloss. Next, we jump to the CSS file and start working on the gloss effect. By default, we set its opacity to zero its size will be the size of its parent, so we give it a width and height of 100%.
we set its position to absolute with its top set to zero and left being zero too. It is of a circle shape so we give it a border radius of 50%. Next we give it a radial gradient background color, background, radial gradient. And the first parameter we pass it is circle shape. That's because the radial gradient by default creates an elliptical shape gradient. Then we give it the first color, which is the white color, at 0% position. The second and third colors are white transparent colors at 50% and 100% positions accordingly. We'll change set to opacity. This way we hint the user's browser to do some rendering on the gloss element opacity change. Next we give it some transition which is gonna be on the opacity that will last 0.2 seconds and we give it an ease out easing function. Since we set the glass element position to absolute we have to set its parent position which is the card to relative position relative. We also set its overflow to hidden. That's because when we will be working with the glass element in JavaScript it will be overflowing its parent which is the card now we move to JS. First, we get the gloss element using get element by ID gloss. For the gloss effect, we do not need any specific calculation. We will use what we have. So we give it a transform. We write gloss style transform that equals translate property which accepts X and why for the x we give minus ry multiplied by 100 for the y we give minus rx multiplied by 100 and then we scale it by 2.4 for the x argument we use ry variable for the y argument we use rx variable that's because we want the gloss effect to mirror the mouse movement. By default the gloss opacity is set to zero so let's give it an opacity. Gloss style opacity equals the same formula we used for the rotation angle but this time we multiply it by 0 0.6 instead of 10. However we have to set the gloss opacity back to zero when the mouse leaves the car. We see that our gloss is appearing but not moving around. That's because inside the translate property we forgot to provide the percentage signs. Testing out we see that everything works fine. That means we are at the end of the video. If you're still here, I do appreciate it. Take care till the next video.